Oh my god, it works. It actually works. So last week I, I did a few impulse buys and I bought a few thermal cameras and the first one just arrived. It's an Ajima Thermal Vision 470. I paid $300 for this one. It was a bit much, but it's so darn cool. So the Ajima 470 is from 1987. Originally cost probably like $100,000, although I can't find uh, the exact original price. I imagine it's one of those things where you kind of have to barter with them because you have to get a quote and whatnot. So it runs on floppy disks. I mean, it saves to floppy disks. 3.5 inch floppy drive there. You have multiple filters. So this is actually a high quality thermography camera and it can actually do a few things better than any of my other thermal cameras. So depending on which filter you select, you can actually go up to almost the melting point of iron, which is pretty darn hot. I believe it goes up to 1500 degrees Celsius for the second filter and I think the third, third one might be even higher. But um, my other camera, my, my Thermap, only goes up to about 500 degrees Celsius. And at that point it starts getting unstable and having some damage. But this one can go up really high. So this already has at least one better feature that can allow me to use it to photograph things such as um, like furnaces and whatnot. Now this one is from an era when you used to have to have a gallon of liquid nitrogen with you to cool it. But this one is cooled by Peltier coolers. And you can actually see the heat sink inside there, I think. So that's pretty cool. So this one, you don't have to have liquid nitrogen with it. And it works on, on its own. You can hook it up to like an RS-232 port. So you can plug it into your computer. And you can have an actual detailed information. And the images that come out of this thing also have a lot of information on them. So I can actually take pictures with this and get some useful information if it still works, which is pretty cool. And if not, it comes with a lens. So that's worth a couple hundred bucks in and of itself, at least to me. Unfortunately, the lens is a bit, uh, I think the uh, anti-reflective coating is uh, being eaten away. It didn't come with a power supply. But it did come with a battery, and this battery is, well, I guess it's a 4 volt. If it's a 4 volt, well then that means that I can actually make one out of a lithium battery pack. It's made by FLIR, and not FLIR. For some reason people keep calling it FLIR, like F-L-E-E-R, but you don't say infrared, like you don't say infrared light, you say infrared light. So I believe that means it's 4 volts, 5 amp hours, but it's a bit confusing how they wrote that made in Sweden. This entire thing is made in Sweden, including the case back before Sweden's government went crazy, back whenever they could actually do some pretty amazing things. No offense Sweden, but your government's kind of gone insane over the past decade. A battery connector. Oh, okay, so this... So it looks like you wear this in your pocket. And that goes into the back of here. Pretty cool. Clip's broken, but I can always fix that. It's pretty darn neat. I bet this thing's gotten quite a bit of use too. I mean, some companies still even rent these out. You can still like get them and they're still worthwhile machines. Now, unfortunately, it looks like this entire thing has been in a damp basement because there's a lot of mold on this camera. Little specks of mold and whatnot there, and especially on this part. Kind of see there's a greenish tinge to it, so definitely gonna have to clean that up. The front lens comes undone. Some speckling. I, I imagine this might be germanium, but you know, I just I don't think it's probably gonna have too much of a difference because these cameras are such low resolution, and the back looks fine. So that's good. Made in Sweden.
So actually, I was originally searching for a lens, and I noticed that most of the lenses on eBay were several hundred dollars. So I found this, which they were wanting like nine hundred dollars for it, and so I bid two hundred dollars or two fifty, and sixty dollars shipping. And I figure instead of just getting a lens, it's really cool to get a historic camera, which is basically the first camera that really became open to, to the public because before that it was only a few companies that required specialized technicians and whatnot but with this you can train someone and they can be doing this in a day and then they can have like a report made up on a floppy disk and give it to the bosses or whatever whereas before that you had to have like liquid nitrogen and you had to have an entire truck with racks of equipment and whatnot so yeah pretty darn cool hydrogen peroxide should do a good job of dealing with all the mold. I like it's on the outside. Oh yeah, wonderful. It's really nice that it's all mostly hard surfaces and so it doesn't really stick too bad. I kind of wish that this came with the manual. If any of you guys have the manual for this, please send me a PDF because that'll be awesome. But I'm kind of glad that it didn't come with the manual or any paperwork because any of that would have been would have been all covered in mold anyway. At least it only came with hard stuff. Now I'm not going to try using this on the the front because this technically is an acid. Now for the front lens, for cleaning that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some like ethanol or some isopropyl alcohol and just try to clean it off with that. At least the coating on the lens. I'll try not to point this towards the sun because I believe that might damage the image sensor. But I could be wrong. It could have a like a thing to stop the light from getting in. So all this is feels like it's magnesium or something, which is pretty cool. Isn't it interesting to think that eight years later, thermal cameras got down to that size? I mean, just amazing. So the 1980s was the era of cooling issues. So that's whenever they figured out how to not require liquid nitrogen. In the 1990s, it was whenever they started being shrunken down more of the size of a small camcorder. I mean, look at this thing. It's bigger than my 1982 JVC KY 1900. It's heavier too. Amazing. So every single camcorder I've ever seen always has the date printed underneath the viewfinder. It's just something that they always did. I find it interesting that they don't have the date anywhere on this viewfinder. It's a Sony, so it's interesting. I wonder which uh, camera this came from. Most likely a broadcast quality camera also because it feels quite industrial. It makes sense for them just to buy one from Japan because there's no sense in reinventing this because all it is is just displaying video. Never mind, I'm wrong. December 1990. So it looks like this one was made a little later, but this model was introduced in 1987. So it's it's symbolic of that level of technology from 1987, even though it's a little bit later. Well, then I'm wrong. You're just really, really tiny. Huh. This thing's pretty darn heavy and uncomfortable. Although I presume there was a rubber pad that would go here to go on the shoulder. However, the main uncomfortable bit is this. There's, it feels like it's breaking your hand off because there's no good way to grip. It's just kind of flat. There is this piece of rubber, and on this particular one, the rubber is coming off, so it's a bit of a can't really grab onto that. But there's nothing, there's nothing to grab. Usually, there's something you can grab onto. This went in like a half an inch, or if this entire thing came out a half an inch and gave something to grab onto, that'd be wonderful. Normally, they have the zoom function there, so I'm surprised they didn't just have like a, a lip that you could hold onto. It's also much longer than most cameras I've dealt with, so the cooling unit on the back, well, and also the floppy drive, just really weigh on the back a lot. I kind of wish they would have made it wider and 
not as long, but, or then if they did that, they should have put this up here and had this come out a little further. So the handle further, so it's more on your back. They totally didn't know how to make a camcorder. They should have just copied Japanese designs because like Sony and JVC had had their camcorders made so well where you can hold them for hours But this one I think you get pretty sore from it So this is a wonderful camera and it's an interesting piece of history, but I think they really dropped the ball on the usability side of it. Because if this was just a visible spectrum camera that only took red, green, and blue, then I don't think anybody would want to buy this and it, would, it looks so badly made. The only redeeming factor and the only reason, reason someone would pay like $100,000 for this is because it's a thermal camera. And so it makes me think that whoever designed this was only like thermography experts and none of them was a camera woman or a cameraman and so they didn't even think to make it very usable because the funny thing is they could have made it a bit wider have a bigger handle on it and maybe change just a few little things and I think that would have made it so much nicer it's just it's very odd it's almost like they took the size, like they had a square, they had a rectangular sod, and they said they would have to get it down into that, and so they just filled that rectangle up as much as they could. I don't know, it's very strange. Because, yeah, I think just having... Like, there's no real grip on this side, and so it feels like this is, like, ripping your hand off. This came out just a little bit, gave you something to hold on to, hold around. It'd be so much better. But, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a review on something from years ago. But it, it's kind of like the price, you know, like... Even though it's old, it's a super expensive old thing. And still it makes you question, like, the engineering behind it. And I can really see why, once people really started using these, they really started demanding the small camcorder-sized ones, and the ones that actually, they're actually made with this, the input from camera people in the 1990s and these big ones that were not very well designed cameras but very well designed thermal cameras didn't quite um, stick around too long if that makes sense well anyway we don't have a power supply but we do have the battery so I think we should take a look at the battery and see if we can power the camera through the battery cable Well, I'm going to cut this because these batteries are nickel cadmium and, whoops. Nickel cadmium batteries are just the worst. I'm so glad we have lithium ion now. Can you imagine having a stupid nickel cadmium battery in your cell phone? Oh god, so terrible. So in a future video, what I'll do is I'll take these out and I will make a lithium ion battery pack that'll fit inside of here. And so those 18650s will make the battery pack like half the weight and four times the power. So that's cool. So all these cells are hooked into series. So we just need to add up the voltage of these. And I believe nickel cadmium cells are 1.2 volts. So 10 times 1.2 is 12 volts. It sounds about accurate. Judging by how the cells are made, this looks like it's the negative, and this looks like it's the positive. And since the wiring coincides with that, then I can trust the wiring. So that makes things pretty simple. So I just need to strip these wires, and then I can put 12 volts across that. Battery low, so that's working. Oops. <gasps> it's working.
Oh, shit. Amazing. Oh my god, it works. It actually works. You know, I might not want to take this thing apart now. I might take it apart a little bit just to clean it up a little bit, but it works. I thought it wasn't going to work. Oh my god. Man, this thing's so cold. I think the reason they use this big metal case is for a heat sink. I can't tell if that's a um, hard drive or what. I'm not sure how, how low the cooling goes, but this thing might cool quite a bit. So it might be interesting to, to look at the cooling mechanism because if this goes down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, then I could possibly duplicate whatever mechanism they use with the Peltier coolers to make other things like make liquid nitrogen or buy a second one because surely there's going to be another one of these popping up on eBay eventually and I can, I'll bid like $50 and I might get it and if I do, I can try to make liquid nitrogen with it if it gets cold enough. So I chose to use my favorite type of floppy disk, verbatim, which are actually pretty good quality. And these ones were made in 1990, so the same year that this thing was made. So the same age. It's working great. I got a couple images, like eight or so, so far, onto the floppy disk. So I'm having some issues reading those, though, because the file extensions are like dot zero zero one and dot zero zero two so i'm going to copy all those files to google drive and you'll be able to find a link to them in the description or in the comment section and i would like you guys' help in decoding those pictures so we can see through this now one more little gripe that i have with this you don't take pictures with that side you have to fill around with these buttons here to take pictures that's a little bit unfortunate because normally what you would expect to do is you would have the, the button on the uh, on this hand so you can take pictures and you can tinker with this hand and you can do all the settings with this hand and take a picture with that hand but instead you got to find the right buttons and whatnot so i'm going to get my old desktop hooked up which has a capture card in it and so we can get video off that and we can do another video talking about the controls and stuff like that I would like to find the user guide before I do that though. So I think it's probably a good place to, place to end the video here and give you guys' help with decoding the floppy disk. I'll probably go take a couple more pictures, but this thing seems to do pretty good. It looks like it's a resolution of 100 by 100 pixels. So it's kind of cool. Actually, you know, holding it like this and viewing it through here would actually be very handy. Maybe that's what it's meant to be, where you hold it like that. I like that quite a bit, actually.